is going on, everybody? Welcome in to the North End Podcast, episode 42. I'm your host here on the North End Podcast, Zach Graham, joined, as always, by my good buddy. He's on record as my best friend. It's Ian Michaud, a.k.a. E, a.k.a. La E. James, a.k.a. Sebastian Drew E.C., a.k.a. Pap E. O'Daniel, a.k.a. Easterdamas. We're going to switch it up. Switching up the Wuju for later on. Okay. AKA Chili Willy, AKA Eon Stonkel. Uh, e, midweek here in Austin, Wednesday evening. We mm-hmm. are in our first bye week of the season. Uh, been a few days. How are you feeling, my friend? I'm feeling pretty great. I'm uh, basically a hero after I just saved my neighbor's dog. So <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good about myself. Uh, wait, 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 wait. What, what happened there? <laughs> oh, to make a long story short, I uh, I saw my neighbor's dog bust out of the screen, the small screen on the first floor window, and just take off and jet on the window. Yeah, he busted right out of there. Oh. Big, big old husky. So I see him okay. take it off, and I'm like, oh man! All right, I gotta go do something about this. So I chase him, and then he just goes on like a poop rampage, <laughs> and was just pooping. What? It was just the dog shit everywhere from the pool to the sidewalk to the road Wait, he shit in the pool and his name is also bob so i'm out there just going hey bob come on bob <laughs> and the dog is obviously not listening to me no he didn't shit in the pool he was near okay. the, <laughs> he was near the pool I'm just, so I'm yelling, yeah. bob come on and uh i call my my buddy my neighbor and i'm like uh-huh. hey man like i'm pretty sure your dog just like fucking busted loose out of your window he's like oh i'm at the airport i was like oh Dang, all right, I'm gonna have to handle this. Wait, was was he leaving for like no he just come back? Was, okay, okay. Just come back. So what a way to get back. What a way to yeah. come home. Your dog, your giant husky <laughs> is loose. And I don't know the dog like that where I could like grab it by the collar and be like, right. come home. you know. So I was trying to coerce it as best I could, and he was just pooping like everywhere. And um, <laughs> finally I corralled him into the uh, dog park here at my complex. So saved a life. He's a husky, yeah, yeah. so maybe I have some sort of Game of Thrones esque story coming here with the with the new dire wolf. Mm. Um, so you know, I'm really open to anything. Yeah, I mean, well, it, a true hero. We already knew that here on the North End, but you know, yeah. just doing your doing your daily job. Yeah, please don't please don't use the word hero too much with me. Just you know. okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Well, you saw, you know, we, we changed up the positioning of the East mm. nickname in the intro because we had, uh, I didn't think that the betting picks could get any worse than they were in week four. <laughs> oh, for in week five. We'll, we'll, talk, we'll get to that later oh, in the, gosh. you know, the true nonsense portion. Uh, and we'll talk best ball, which, you know, hinted on Sunday. We didn't feel too good about it. We got the results now. We'll talk about it. Uh, <laughs> first things first, though, we... We uh, pushed the Austin FC to recap of their their inaugural game uh, back on Sunday, and so let's let's just go ahead and and start there. We we previewed that match a week ago today. Um, obviously, Friday night the team took the field at the pitch. I almost said they took the pitch at the pitch, which you know I guess is also <laughs> technically accurate. Um, you weren't able to make it out prior engagement. I did go out there for about 60 minutes. I um, mm-hmm. also had an engagement to get to. And, and luckily where I went to our buddy's house, actually the producer sheriff, uh, they had the game on. So was able to catch, you know, I only really missed a, about 10 minutes of the match. Um, I know you saw, you know, all of the posts across the various social media outlets. I know you, you and I, you know, talked about my experience there, but the atmosphere was even better than I expected it to be. When I saw um, the clips and everything, I that's exactly how I felt. Yeah, like I thought, uh, you know, Landon Cotham from, from Moon Tower. Landon was out there. Um, the We Are Austin TV guys were out there. Brian and Mike were out there. Aries was out there. I, mm-hmm. And honestly, man, like the one OGs. thing from, from a personal level, when we, when we go to any sort of event, whether it's a, a preseason match or we go to hop squad after a game, which is, is rare for us, or at this FC2 match, I see so many faces that mm-hmm. I recognize from other videos on social media, other accounts that we come across on Twitter or on Instagram profile pictures and things like that. But it's sometimes hard for me to 
recall, oh, that's this person. Let me introduce yeah. myself, this and that. And so, like, I definitely – I guess if anybody maybe sees one of us, don't hesitate to say what's up. Like we've had some people kind of interact with us in the North end, but I did, I kept, I feel like I, I look like a weirdo out there because half the time I pass people and I'm, I do a double take just like instinctually. Yeah. Because I've seen these people. I've just never met them. So yeah. it, it, there were so many recognizable faces out there. And I think the, the one thing that stood out to me about the entire experience in the stands everybody was smiling everybody okay. was having fun um, Good. and like i got up on this tangent talking about how landon kind of broke it down the atmosphere he was like it's it was almost like a high school football game and in in texas nice. he said this too in texas that's a compliment and this i thought that was that was spot on it was very intimate you know we're right there next to the field the players when they celebrated the goals came right up to the railing there mm -hmm. uh so that that was pretty cool. Um, you know, I, I believe this the capacity there is about twelve hundred, but I've I've seen various numbers and figures in that regard. Whatever the capacity is, there was no extra space at yeah. at Farmer Field. Um, I know they were turning some people away at the gates who I think just thought they could whether they thought it was free or thought they could walk up and still buy tickets online and just get right in. Uh not the case. So I guess I will uh, say I look foolish now for a month ago saying I thought these games should be free because if they mm -hmm. were free, uh, I don't think I was going to get in showing up yeah. like right as, as kickoff uh, happened. And um, they clearly need a way to control this crowd. And I don't know if the, I don't know if the interest stays as high as it was mm -hmm. for the first match. Right. But if they're turning people away, you would think it's not just going to get empty, at least in game two, three, or four. I I would definitely agree. Uh, I was I had some FOMO for sure, seeing <laughs> y'all there, uh, seeing the atmosphere, and that's awesome. Um, as somebody who's never been to a high school football game, mm. don't think I've ever been to a high school football game. You New didn't York or you? Yeah, didn't have football at my high school <laughs> while I was there. Yeah like maybe one or three years ago when mm -hmm. I was back in high school. Um, but uh, the atmosphere looks super fun. Like, I mean, intimate isn't the best word for that, but um, intimate <laughs> and uh, had the players run top. And I'm, I'm, I, uh, I'm definitely interested in, cause obviously we have no familiarity with the league mm -hmm. and I've, I've seen the, the FC two guys and I've been thoroughly impressed with the roster that we have, but I need to also understand what type of players are playing in that league, mm -hmm. um, you know, to feel how I want to feel about seeing that team. So I'm super excited to go down there and see them or up there and see them. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, I was, I, I was jealous, man. Had some FOMO. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I guess just to, to talk a little bit more about the atmosphere, I think there was, especially on the more of like the supporters end where Lamerga was. And, and I think more of that, that core group of, of LV down there on the left side of the stands, um, mm -hmm. just like 10 yards away, coach Wolf, Sean Rubio, um, Julio Cascante, Danny Pereira, um, oh, John awesome. Golmanich was there. You saw Maxi Seba, uh, standing down kind of near the end of the fence. And Sophie Jeffel was out there. So the support, from the first team members, players and staff alike was, was also great to see. And again, I, I don't think that keeps up throughout the season, but again, yeah. like having that crossover is, is only a good thing for, for the franchise. Um, yeah, that's beautiful. Let's go ahead and talk about the lineup here. Uh, so, you know, we, we saw the uh, group of five first team contracted players get loaned you know, I guess they they have to use that term, I guess, officially with how the contracts work there. But, uh, you know, sent down, uh, optioned, whatever whatever uh, you want to call it across the, the various sports between the, the big leagues and the minor leagues. It was uh, Damian Loss, Kip Keller, uh, Charlie Asensio, um, Alfonso Acampo, Chavez, uh, and CJ Fodre were mm -hmm. the five Austin FC uh, first team members that, that came down to FC two and, and all, all five of them with the exception of Fodre got the start here. Um, so the other members of the 11, we saw the other three super draft picks that we've talked about at length 
on the North end, uh, Sal Mazzaferro. He was paired up with Kip Keller there uh, yep. at the center back positions. Uh, Charlie Asensio, of course, assuming his position on, uh, uh, in the left back spot there. Um, and then Joe Hafferty, who was announced uh, very recently. Um, and I actually had a conversation with Landon about this. Like, I wanted to know if he knew anything else about Joe because Joe was wearing the armband. Oh. And oh. he was announced March 16th which was eight days before the first game. So mm-hmm. I think he hit his uh, prognostication there was that potentially Hafferty and then Jonathan uh, Santillan, uh, and I apologize to, to John if I'm mispronouncing that, that last name, those guys were announced together on March 16th. His, his guess was maybe those guys have been in Austin for a little bit longer and mm-hmm. were just announced and officially signed that week prior uh, to the match. Cause I think for me, that was pretty eye opening that a guy that we had no clue was here until eight days before the game is wearing the armband first time out. Yeah. I, when you said his name, I was like, I don't remember that individual at all. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) So yeah, that is interesting. And uh, the, the theory there by Landon makes, makes some sense for sure. Yeah. Well, that's why they pay him the big bucks, right? Mm. <laughs> so, uh, I guess just a little bit more about Hafferty, since you didn't remember who that particular individual was, uh, 24 <laughs> years old, originally from the state of Washington, Sounders Academy, then four seasons at Oregon State. So we do have that Oregon State connection yep. here. We've yep. talked about that before. Um, and speaking of that, that was another person kind of standing there in along with the, the first team members was Coach Boss, who was, came to us from – from the Beavers up there right. in the Pac-12. Um, 37th overall in the 2021 Super Draft by Miami, immediately traded to the Sounders. Uh, and then he was with the Seattle affiliate, Tacoma Defiance, who I believe is the next home match here. I may be mistaken. Don't have the FC2 schedule up in front of me, but 10 USL Championship appearances with Tacoma Defiance in 2021. And then they moved into Next Pro in 2022. 22 appearances for Tacoma last season, two goals, three assists, and 12 starts. Um, so, again, Hafferty wearing the armband. He was featured prominently in the kind of story of the match video that the club mm-hmm. put out for the FC2 match, which was great to see that we're at least going to get some type of content or some number of, of videos like that similar to the first team. So, that's great to see. Um, midfield, Valentin Noel, Jackson Falti, the other two super draft picks there. Cristo Vela wearing the number 99. Uh, he got the start as well. David Rodriguez wearing the 10. EJ Johnson out there on the left. And then Alfonso Ocampo Chavez up top uh, wearing his number 28. Uh, like I said, Fodre was on the bench. The rest of the bench, uh, John Santillan was there. Eric Lopez as the backup keeper. Uh, Sebastian Pignot, Chris Pinkham, Brian Arellano, Alonso Ramirez, uh, Steve Louis Jean, who was uh, one of the amateur players, I believe, that was um, signed uh, kind of in conjunction with those moves with the players being loaned down mm-hmm. from FC to FC2. They also uh, brought in some some amateur level players. I don't know if that's for that match or if it's like a 10 day contract similar to the NBA. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't really know the, the, uh, mechanisms there but he he made the bench and, and checked Torre as well that rounded out the team um so i guess for you i have a couple takeaways do you have any takeaways from that lineup maybe any surprise guys that got the start or were included or some guys that were left off anything for you there no uh obviously with cj's uh rehab his injury um makes sense that he would be coming off the bench I would assume he'd probably be starting if he was full go, you know, if he had had a full camp. Potentially, yeah. Could be wrong there. Um, Mm -hmm. And then, obviously, Bobo being gone. Mm -hmm. Um, But, yeah, I mean, I love to see the draft picks in there for sure. Um, And I'm excited to see them play in person. Uh, You know, I was impressed with them every time we saw them. And um, no real shocks for me there. Yeah, I think the only thing, and I'm not – surprised or shocked by it but like one thing i wanted to see as a fan especially after we got the announcement the week of the inaugural game is like i would have liked to watch micah burton 
in person for the first time, but I, yeah. we will have plenty of opportunities and he will have plenty of opportunities to make his mark on this team in the next pro league. Um, you know, and that's something that um, I was talking about with Hernan at the game was like those. And then I think it's been addressed on some other podcasts this week, talking about FC two is like some of those guys who are coming straight out of the Academy Yes, they have this ceiling and they have a lot of talent and, and we want to see them continue to progress through the ranks of the club. But to go from that academy competition to now you're playing against grown mm-hmm. men who some of them have, like Bobo, a lot of national team experience for how young he is. And we've got guys like Hafferty who have multiple years at the professional yep. level in USL and Next Pro, And you've got five first team guys coming down. Um, so I think it, it makes sense that there's just a lot more competition. It's, it's like in any sport, when you go up a level, high school to college, college to pros, whatever there's, you always go back to being mostly on the bottom of the totem pole, unless you're that, you know, the, the LeBron James phenom type of player, right. Who just is a starter right away. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess I some takeaways from the players, like obviously the the game was not to the level of, of MLS, like the soccer that you and I have become accustomed to over the last two plus years. Um, but I, I still, I did not look at really anything that happened on the pitch for the 60 minutes I was there, or the 20 minutes that I caught on the broadcast and say, oh, well, th- like this is just unwatchable now. Like it, Like the vibe in the stands, high school football game, it was not anywhere near like a high school level for me. Mm -hmm. It was not like watching high school soccer. Like I thought, I thought it was still very entertaining. Um, So, and it was good to see Kip go out there and have a solid outing. Damian loss was pretty damn impressive in that man. Like, and I don't, I don't, I don't remember how long Bersano's contract is, but, Mm -hmm. and we haven't seen Damian loss before this. Right. Yeah. We've had high expectations since he was announced, you know, multiple seasons ago. I think, I think he, he could be pretty good, man. And the game okay. saving the, the three points saved at the end, literally the last play of the game diving save to cap off his night. He was, he was pretty impressive. Um, we'll take that. Goals 49th minute, uh, Papa enjoy for Houston. Um, Scores it from the right side on the break. He goes and does the Cristiano Ronaldo celebration, to, to which I kind of, oh, okay, buddy. <laughs> like, all right. Um, they were also <laughs> they were starting, I forget the, the player's first name, but his last name's Vanderkust. Um, that is actually what Landon told me at the time. I recognized the name, and he said, yeah, that's the guy who's supposed to get first team minutes for Houston. Um, and had, you remember when, um, the, the team played Roots Academy because Dynamo Dose had to back out mm-hmm. uh, of the match. Mm-hmm. Landon uh, said that he thought he had heard that Vanderkust had had visa problems. So maybe that's that's one of the players, I think, that wasn't here yet and caused them to back out of that match. Interesting. Um, yeah, so he was out there, um, and he looked good. And Houston, I thought, was a little bit more physically imposing than we were, mm-hmm. um, at least with these, the starting 11. Um Valentin Noel pulls pulls the goal back, pulls the game level, 64th minute, eerily similar to the first goal scored at Q2, that little kind of toe poke uh, coming on the cross from the right or right mm-hmm. to left, toe pokes it in, uh, 1-1. Then we do see some subs come in, highlighted by CJ Fodre, who I didn't get to see him in person. I was already at the Sheriff's uh, by the time he had been subbed on. But what I saw – and the reactions of the fans uh, yeah. afterwards, he was he looked every bit the part. Like the excitement that has been building for this kid, mm-hmm. he stood out. I think to me on the broadcast and and from what everybody else said, he stood out as the guy. Like, yeah, he's gonna be on the first. He's he's gonna be yeah. up with the first team sooner rather than later. So that was great to see. Um, and then he actually kind of starts or keeps the ball alive for Austin on the game winner in the 83rd Valentin Noel brace um, yeah. who continues his form from preseason with the first team. He was great there. Um, and I'll also say David Rodriguez was also dangerous. I thought he looked good. Um, and so that also continued in my mind. Uh, so two, one victory Austin FC two, uh long rambling way to say 
congratulations to all those guys. We love to see it as fans. Great to see them. Uh, again, smiles on everybody's faces and after the match, smiles on all the players' faces as well. They've been working hard towards this and to, to come away with a win against Houston, no less, in their first go-round. Um, couldn't have asked for a better result, I think. They avenged us. <laughs> they did. They did. We and, for and, uh, and we, they delivered. And look, man, I know that um, I messed with the Easter Domus at the at the beginning because of our betting picks, but I believe you called 2 1 Austin on last Wednesday's episode. So, yes, Easter Domus is. lives. <laughs> Easter Domus lives. Um, quick preview of what we've got this weekend because first team um, on the bye, obviously, here on Saturday, but FC2 will go for their first road match up to uh, Sporting KC2 Sunday, 3 p.m. Central. Um, Okay. SKC2 last season, nine wins, three draws, 12 losses, a negative seven goal differential. They finished eighth in the Eastern Conference, which is interesting that in next pro, KC is in the East and not hmm. in the West, um, at least last year. And they were 15th overall, did not qualify for the playoffs. Um, coached by Benny Fellhaber, who I don't know if you remember that name, if that's uh, familiar to you at all. But uh, Failhaber, I, I remember that name, even if I might not be pronouncing it correctly. Uh, MLS veteran, U.S. national team veteran, 44 caps for the U.S., two goals, a long career uh, that started in Germany in 2005, concluded in 2020 with SKC. He spent time with the Revs, SKC, LAFC, and the Colorado Rapids uh, during his nine-year MLS career. So, um Looks like he kind of retired with SKC and yep. just went into the coaching ranks there for them. So, so that's that. I thought that was pretty cool. You know, when we're researching these teams, I feel like we're going to see things like that kind of throughout the FC two season, where it's like, oh, look who this team has, or look who's coaching this team, what have you. Yeah, um, they lost two one to the Rapids two in their week one match. Um, it gave up that second goal in the first minute of stoppage time to end the match. Um, Yeah, so tough break for them. They'll be looking to bounce back. Their one goal was scored by Nassim Mekadichi. It's my best go around at at that name. Uh, The only player on their roster signed with the first team, and this is uh, absent, I think, anybody that they could loan down this weekend. On their Mm -hmm. official roster, goalkeeper goalkeeper Kendall McIntosh is the only one who, who does have that SKC first team contract, but is listed on the SKC2 roster. Um, So for us, I guess my only question is, do you think that those same first team guys travel? Or I guess more from a broad view, do we think that we take that same 20 up there or do the, maybe some of the other guys get in the mix? Because we've got a lot more than 20 guys, I think, available to be in the team potentially. Um, and dude, <laughs> no shame if you have no lean there because it's tough. We have no we have no frame of reference. Mm-hmm. I do have a lean. Okay. I had to think about it for a moment because I was, you know, I was gonna preface this with I really don't have a <laughs> fucking clue. Right, right, right. <laughs> um, but I think probably this week would be the week that you would most likely travel with the same team given that we don't have a regular where we have a bye week this week right right um so i could for sure especially seeing what's going on with kip and his whole surrounding story with this season that those guys particularly him would travel with the team to get more more game time more experience and then if they are brought back up for the roster on on, on match day then Great. But I think this would probably be the week where you could get away with this. Yeah, I, I think I'm I'm pretty much right there with you. Our our, our most educated guess, right? Yes. I think the bye week is the thing that, that definitely stands out there. So um absent the first team in action this week, and I am definitely looking forward to catching this game on Apple TV on Sunday and um you know, I've seen I've seen that the majority of games will be broadcast, but I, I don't think I've seen confirmation that it's a hundred percent of the next pro game. So I got my fingers crossed 
that uh, this is not one of those games that won't be broadcast because I need my Verde and Black fix this weekend, and, and that's where it's going to come from. I was going to say, I, I will be watching. Yeah. All right. Last thing to do here, uh, score predictions. How much is Austin FC2 winning by <laughs> at SKC2 this week, Easter Damas? Well, look, we already we're gonna have to base this educated guess on the educated guess that I just made. Mm-hmm. That will be with the same guys who are obviously, you know, uh, on the first team roster, mm-hmm. um, quality players. So I'm gonna go ahead and say we eke out another two one victory. All right, back to back two ones to start Austin FC 2s story. I like it. Um, I'm going to repeat what I said last week. Give me two nil. I think Damian Loss did a lot uh, in my eyes last week. His stock is going is rising <laughs> in my eyes. So uh, two nil Austin FC and and uh, CJ Fodre getting on the score sheet. Uh, I was going to say uh, I, I I wish I went with a little Fodre Fodre prop there um, no. because yeah, let's hopefully we see him <laughs> for a full go. Can we get FC two betting odds somewhere? What are the odds on a Fodre goal? Let me Someone's get, got them get, somewhere. We just got to <laughs> talk to the right people. Let me get some scratch down on that. <laughs> uh, so there you have it. Uh, I guess we can kind of tie this in, talk about a little bit of the happenings around Austin FC this week during the bye. Uh, I think this is the the most fun one that we have here. Uh, Bobasi, and again, I, I believe it's Brahuanga. Bra- uh, is my my best guess right now. Maybe uh, Lincoln Rose can can slide into the DMs and hook us up with the pronunciation there too. Uh, Bobo, as we we know that that's his nickname amongst the team from from being out there in preseason and, and hearing hearing them uh, call for the ball in such a manner. Uh, he's overseas with the Uganda national team, as we discussed, um, and he's a veteran of that national team. I believe already had eleven caps coming into this past week. Africa Cup of Nations qualifying for Uganda. Um, mm-hmm. He was on the bench, did not get in the in the game for the first matchup against Tanzania um, earlier this week. But then yesterday on Tuesday, uh, got the start and played 89 minutes. In, and Uganda pulls out the win, which was a big three points in their group. Uh, looks like that group is already already locked up. I think by Algeria, I believe. And so I think Uganda and Tanzania kind of going back and forth. Second place will will qualify for the knockout stage of the Cup of Nations there. Awesome. Um, so I assume he will go back out there in the summer window, uh, international break, and and we'll be able to cheer him on uh, once again. So I think congrats to him on a, on a successful outing there. 89 yeah. minutes. Uh, we actually, we've got a FOT mob rating, 6.7. So okay. not bad at all. For Bobo, uh, created one chance, created six uh, recoveries on defense, um, eight passes into the final third, three of three accurate crosses. Um, so not a, not a bad outing for Bobo there, and uh, just want to see more of that. Absolutely, I mean, look, I, he just stood out when we when we saw him in the preseason. It just he was somebody who just looked like he was playing at his own speed, knew the game, was comfortable, could see things before they were developing. Mm-hmm. Um, and just had really good instincts. And like you said, he's probably coming into his own body a little bit more in regard to his physicality. And I'm excited for him. And, you know, you talked about Fodre earlier. And it's like, yeah, you're looking at the future nine. Like, yeah. this is awesome. Um, I'm excited for this squad. And, and shout out to Bobo for sure. Um, that's just really encouraging stuff. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see the competition between him and Noel and Valti and all those other guys there in the in the FC two yeah. midfield. Um, all right, maybe not the most positive type of stuff here, but but let's talk about it. Uh, did a little research as we've got the extra time here on the bye week. Austin has had six bye weeks or you know weeks off, whatever you want to call it, through the first two seasons. Uh, results. Mm-hmm leaving a little bit to be desired here. Uh, One win, three losses, and two draws. So five points from those six games. I think overall you would obviously like to see some stronger results when the coaching staff and the team as a whole have an extra week or two sometimes uh, to plan, to prep, you know, to to be ready for these teams. Uh, Mm -hmm. In season one, uh, we had a June match against SKC on the road. I believe that was the last match 
uh, before we came home to Q2 for the inaugural game at the stadium. Mm -hmm. Uh, That was a 1-1 draw. I believe Austin scored first. Uh, SKC came back to equalize. But what we know about that first year, uh, no shame in that result at all. Then in July, uh, the teenager game or, you know, the Rui Daz game, both are true. Uh, So obviously (laughs) we, we remember that one well. Uh, yeah. And that was certainly a letdown. Then in October, that that first year, we also came off of a bye, uh, lost one nil uh, to Minnesota. Then last year uh, at San Jose was coming off of a bye. Uh, that was the two two draw. Austin gets up two to nil, gives up two late goals, and and honestly lucky to not give up a third at the end of that match. That was uh, Maxi though with that banger goal from like thirty five yards out off the Julio long ball. Um, Correct. I believe that was his first goal in an Austin FC uniform, if I'm not mistaken. Um, then really the lone bright spot here. Uh, 1-0 win at Montreal. Um, Danny with the red card, Maxi with the shorthanded winner. One of my favorite Austin FC victories of all time. Certainly a road victory. Um, and then in October last year, 2-0 loss at Vancouver. So, um it's not going to get any easier with LAFC after this buy, but hopefully, I mean, obviously we'll get into that game next Wednesday, but uh, hopefully, I think this is not the only, certainly not the only week that we have, you know, no game or a break here this season. So just hopefully mm-hmm. at the end of the season, we're looking back on the bye weeks from this year and we can, you know, maybe smile a little bit about them instead of be like grimacing, looking towards a bye week because we haven't fared too well in the past. Well, this is a tough one coming up. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, and I'm I I was already thinking about the other day. What what is Ian gonna predict for that one? What does Easter <laughs> Thomas not. have in store at LAFC <laughs> with the form that we're in right now? Uh, we'll have well, to wait a week to see. Well, while you were just rambling there, I was just like in my head, like, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna have to predict this score coming up. Yeah. And obviously I'm like, you know, like I'm a LeBron guy. So like if anyone's like disrespecting the crown and obviously they have the crown right now, I'm usually like, yo, you're, you're an idiot. Like yeah. don't. And now yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking about having to predict this next game and uh, I'm not well, predicting a loss. We're also idiots. So it, yeah, you know. I'll be an idiot. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to try very hard, dude. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I kind of have a little bit of, shot and fruit for this, I guess, maybe just against the folks that say that we shouldn't have loaned out Romagna or that Josh was somehow stepping over some kind of line by pointing out when asked that Romagna was not fit. And that's why he was loaned out. Um, Olympia fans and looks like, and some beat writers that cover the team uh, getting frustrated with uh, shocker. Romagna's level of fitness, uh, and I'll just read one example here, uh, and we can credit We Are Austin TV for uh, posting this translation uh, from Matias Ramirez down there in Paraguay. Um, Barreto notices that the Olympia shirt weighs heavily on him. Romagna is totally out of shape, and it is the leadership's mistake to have brought in someone who hasn't played or been taken into account for a while there are many mistakes and Cardona should talk less and do more personal opinion. So uh, like we mentioned last week, Johan Romagna still has not appeared for Olympia. uh, And now we know why it's the same reason he struggled in Austin. So um, I think to me for a front office that is looking for a win right now, I think the reports out of Paraguay, you can, you can take that a, a little bit of solace in that, Sean Rubio, Josh Wolf, that like even with our center back woes right now, um, yeah. if he can't get on the field down there. Yeah, like come on. And yeah. uh, I mean, look, we – not to pile on the guy, whatever. He's, you know, he's not our – not on our roster right now. Like so I don't right. really care too much about him. Right. Um, Bro, we saw him in the preseason. He did five sprints and three he, sprints. Three sprints. I yeah. tried to give him a little. I tried to give him a little, extra, <laughs> a little credit and tried to yeah. give him bonus points. And he was down. And look, bro, he just doesn't have your prototypical soccer player's body. And I don't even think that's necessarily like him being 
incredibly out of shape. Like the man has tree trunk thighs Mm -hmm. and lugging those bitches around for 90 minutes is probably pretty tiring. Like to give, you know, know, I've given him extra credit. I'm trying to give him a little bit of an out here. Yeah, you are. Um, So I guess I do care about him, Uh, (laughs) (laughs) but yeah, dude, like, come on, if he's not playing down there, then, then please no, no more, no more. I mean, like, look, and I don't, let's not get it twisted. Nobody ever had it like teammates, coaches from, from anything outside of his fitness standpoint. Mm -hmm. Nobody had a bad thing to say about the guy. He seems like he always seemed like a great dude was always (laughs) smiling. Looked like he was, you know, almost infectious type of smile. And like, and I don't question that he, like, I never thought he wasn't giving his all when he was on the pitch, but it's got to be in every aspect of your, your preparation. And it, it clearly wasn't, and still isn't, isn't for him. So, yeah. I mean, that's not good because I mean, like getting out of shape and eating really well here in Austin is easy to do. I, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, for sure. So I don't know how it is down there in Paraguay. Um, but uh, yeah, best of luck to him. Do. Yeah, I mean, hey, uh, and he's still technically, you know, he's on loan from us. He's not a hundred percent gone yet, so um, hopefully he turns it around for his sake and and by extension, Austin FC. All right, let's talk about this. Oh God, let's talk about this, and I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it up on screen here. Uh, oh God. So, Instagram today, <laughs> Maxi Aruti, and then Diego Fagundes uh, sharing this picture. That uh, that we are us in TV posted, and uh, I believe that translation you, you see it there on the caption is that seguimos sin entender, we still don't understand. Um, and uh, I think it was like 15 20 minutes after this was was posted by we are us in TV that um, Hernan B, whoever's got the admin at the time, said it has to do with the training drill everybody you know calm down calm down and uh look man (laughs) i am as i am certain that this is about the training drill that they're doing in that picture just like i'm certain that when maxi posted the picture of himself pointing to the back of his jersey two weeks ago that he was just reminding us that he wears 37 like come on guys you can't look (laughs) This fits in exactly to mm-hmm. what we were saying on Sunday. It's like your actions. You like, look, you think this is cute. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. You are not helping. You're not helping. But look, and if this is about a training drill, you don't understand the training drill and you're going to post so, about it. Like, yeah. come on, bro. Who do you think you're fooling with that? Oh man. I, <laughs> You, I told you I didn't want to talk about this, but yeah, bro. It, it like if you think this is cute, like it's not, you know. Um, and I mean, you're and even oh my god, even if you are talking about a training drill, you're not doing yourself any sort of favors by posting this. No. You're not because either it's okay, uh, we don't understand something we're doing in practice and like <laughs> you're right <laughs> light, light of it it's like well that's not great yeah <laughs> um it does look like an interesting drill like they're holding hands kind of here they obviously yeah. have some sort of like app like is that a band that is keeping them connected while they're going out to like make a play on the ball i don't know the things i do know are that zardis isn't posting anything like this mm-hmm uh, Alex Ring, who lost his job to the coach's son, mm-hmm. hasn't posted any sort of vague sort of content, at least to my knowledge. Yeah, I mean, I, we, about we, things that they don't we understand. See most, we see most Austin FC posts for sure. And posts. Like, man, um, you know, I see the so like you see the laughing emoji at the end here. Mm-hmm. It looks kind of lighthearted in the pictures. They're maybe like an awkward laugh as they're trying to figure this drill out. Sure. I'm being optimistic here, but still <laughs> I, I'm, we've used optimistic too much at this point. Like I, I trying to give them the benefit of the doubt in this situation. Did they take it down? 
I don't think so. Man. I don't think so. It, it just, when you add in all the other things that have happened mm -hmm. with this season, you have to take this in the, you have, we're not the ones taking this out of weird context when you have the entire context of the season up until this point. Exactly. The with Diego and coach, Maxie doing the, the, the Jersey thing, the, the, the blow up on the sideline last week. Mm -hmm. And we know they're, you know, we know they're close. We know they talk. Mm -hmm. It's fucking ridiculous, man. <laughs> like, come on, bro. Yeah. I mean, that's that, that my, my whole thing is like, is, you these guys are hyper aware of the fan base and and what's going on in the fan base because of what's going on on the pitch mm -hmm. between these two guys and Josh and and Zardis and like that debate has been going on since since week 1 but look i don't think maxi especially these guys aren't doing anything but stoking the flames. And like, if you think it's cute to say, Oh, it was about a training drill. Like, bro, like, no, like you said, nobody else is posting shit like this where it can be taken mm -hmm. in both contexts. Like maybe it is a hundred percent about a training drill, but like, you also know what's going on. Like I said, like, just like with Maxi pointing to the back of his shirt, mm -hmm. what are you, what are you getting at? Uh, to me, it's to me, it's it's Occam's razor. What's the most likely thing that they're talking about here? Mm -hmm. And it's the situation between them and Josh Wolf. And you know what? What makes this like I'm the more I think about this now because I've been thinking about it, mm -hmm. it just plastered in my face on the screen right now. <laughs> is like, what's the end goal here, bro? Yeah. Like, are you trying to get some fucking dude on the internet to feel bad for you? that you're not getting playing time as a professional athlete? Like, is that the actual end goal? Because did you think that this would be helpful in regard to you winning your starting job back or, and or just playing more in general, whatever it may be? Because if, if, if it's the former, then like, bro, like, come on. Yeah. Like, is it to the point now where like you actually want coach gone, Maxi Diego? Like, is, is, is that what they actually are after? Because – it has to be that unless you're so concerned about getting people to tweet for you in your defense. I'm just trying to make sure I'm, I'm on Instagram right now. Like obviously we follow all of the players on both teams. Um, nobody else, no other teammates reposted this. And I know that Maxi didn't tag anybody else in this, but if this was some big joke from practice, maybe you see, other guys in that Monte Convos group, at least, mm -hmm. Seba, Emmy, maybe they're reposting it or cut, like, I don't know, man. And so, like, again, we love to read too much into things. And yeah. I love to put the tinfoil hat on from time to time. Mm -hmm. But, like, mm -hmm. the, I don't feel like we're going that far by saying this is worrisome because, like, at, at, at best, you're just stoking the flames. Because what yeah. was everybody's first reaction? It was exactly what mm -hmm. Hernan or whoever posted this from We Are Us and TV said. Hold up via Ruti's Instagram and shared by Fagundes. We still don't understand. And I don't know, man. Again, it's to me, it's just in the context of being on a team, this is not helpful. This type of conduct, whether it's showing up the coach when you get subbed out and you disagree – or you don't get called to sub on and you disagree, or you're throwing these subliminal messages out on your Instagram, whether it's pointing at the back of your Jersey or, or saying, we don't, we still don't understand only posting the two, like you are posting with the guy who is also disgruntled at the time. <sighs> yeah, dude. I, I'm just looking at the comments there on the side. And obviously mm -hmm. you see the push for people saying it's a training exercise. And you see Johan in the back. He's, Obviously laughing. It looks yeah. a little light spirited. I, I get that. Yeah. Uh, and again, even if, uh, again, uh, guys can have fun in practice and still be disgruntled for sure. But uh, I mean, I, I said it on the last podcast that there's a weird smell coming out of this locker room right now mm -hmm. and it ain't dirty socks. <laughs> it is not great vibes right now. No, um, it is not fun vibes in this locker room. And yeah, dude, I, 
social media just makes things so weird. And I know that they have a voice and they want to be heard. And I get that. And like, I understand that. And they want to provide a more intimate look into their day to day with the team. And that's great. And that's a part of this entire landscape of professional sports in this time and space. Mm -hmm. But again, are you just trying to get somebody to feel bad? Like to somebody to, well, yeah, it's, no, I'm confused. Why coaches and play you too. Is that what you want? But well, I mean, I probably, They've got a lot of people. They've got a lot of people that that for one reason or another think that they can do no wrong. Um, I don't know, man. This is it. Just it's none of it's good. None of it's good. Yeah, I agree. And I think that's. I think that's where we can end it. Like it's you know just wanted to bring that up because again, like man, if you put that out there, you know that there are yeah. Aust- dedicated Austin FC podcast pages whatever out there mm-hmm. that are gonna pick this shit up and it it took her non what five minutes to do that or we are awesome tv so i don't want to keep just saying it's her non because i know all those guys put in the work but mm-hmm. <sighs> man i don't know i'm trying to look at it as as best as i can and like they're laughing in the pictures and but still you have to understand how people are going to take it yeah yeah, yeah. again you're a uh, like I said before, who do you think you're fooling with that? Now I'm upset, bro. I said I didn't want to talk about it. Now well, my blood pressure's up. I don't want yeah. – like, now I'm, like, thinking about, like, like if I ever got to, like, meet Maxie. And yeah. he's like, oh, you fucking asshole. And it's like, <laughs> no, dude. <laughs> like, like, <come> on. <laughs> I was like, man, would I, like, cry? <laughs> I might. <laughs> oh, I mean, oh, but, man. but, hey, man, like, if if, if – if us talking about your actions on the field or what you post on your social media like makes you dislike us or anybody else that is one of like again as fans i think mean, you can still you should still be able to be critical of both coaches and yeah. players yeah yeah but still maintain that that relationship as a fan like we are fanatics of anybody pretty much who puts on that jersey and it, yeah. that hasn't changed with these guys. We're just, we want the shit to get worked out. Yeah, no, I know that's, and I think that's why that I've, I, I've like as I'm processing a little bit more. I think that that's mm-hmm. kind of why I got upset there is yeah. because it's like I want, and that's why I kept asking, who is this for? What is the end goal? Because yeah. I want your alliance to be towards coach, not not coach, the team, the success yeah. of the squad, which involves coach. Yeah, exactly. And Absolutely. it's going to involve coach throughout this process and. Yeah, let's come on. Let's get out of here. <laughs> well, let me let me cheer you up a little bit here, E. Okay. Because okay. Uh, you know Sunday, you yeah. know we we get back from the game. We're down in the dumps. I guess Saturday, I should say. We see fucking Denny Buanga come in. Not only does he come in and score the winner, but right after Carlos Vela misses a PK. Um, <laughs> yeah, we were we were. We were going through it on Saturday night, and best ball was not helping. Uh, and then so yesterday, uh, calculate those best ball scores. And <laughs> look who's on top in week five. <laughs> North End Podcast, 43 points, uh, taking down the week for the first time this season. Oh, it feels good. We needed that. We needed Get used to it, boys. Get used to it. <laughs> Once we get healthy. So overall this week, uh, 43 points for the good guys, uh, 35 for Texas Ring of Fire, who continue to, I don't think RB and the boys have taken down a week yet, but they've been, since week one, mm-hmm. they've been consistent, consistent, consistent. So you see more of that this week, 35 points, 28 from We Are Austin TV, and a new season low, how about it, Moon Tower Soccer, 23 points. Suck it, guys. That's all I have to say. (laughs) (laughs) We like, look, we said it after brother. You can (laughs) dig yourself out, brother. You can do it. (laughs) Well, I think important to note um, the DNPs this week, because international break, uh, I think did a lot to help our case this week. Cause you know, we're still, we're we're missing Uh Insigne. We're missing Cucho. Evander is out. Uh, Taxi Fountas did appear off the bench. So we're, maybe we're getting a little bit healthier there. Uh, Texas ring of fire caught five DNPs, uh, as did moon tower and then seven DNPs for we are Austin TV. So, uh, you know, 
getting a little Correct. taste of what we've been through early in yep. the season with these with these automatic zeros on the team. So uh, sure looking at these, so many good players. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this, was you know, week, that's, this was the week. This is the most important week of the season, and we knew that. Yeah, coming. yeah. Just wait for that summer international break. We'll win yeah. another week. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Overall standings, uh, We Are Austin TV does extend that lead, a narrow lead still, 226 overall, uh, Moon Tower at 220, Texas Ring of Fire eclipses that 200 mark, they're at 203, we're still bringing up the rear, 186, but we're, we're coming baby, we're coming for that top spot. Um, all right, let me bring you back down again real quick, let's talk about the week five betting picks here, um, before I do that, I'll let you, okay, you, you got it. You're a pro. I got, a, I got there was a, a notification popped up said your mic is muted. Idiot. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's uh let's pull up what the disaster this was last week with the week 5 betting picks. Um Ugh. Ofer. We didn't think it could get worse, but it did. Uh Ofer on the week so we had uh we had Austin to win and over two and a half that was plus 130. We had the Zardis goal uh plus 140 obviously that didn't come through oh could we that had... makes it even worse when he didn't oh my god so if anyone has just reason to be more upset at Giassi's artist it is me yeah <laughs> and watch me just wash this anger right <laughs> off of me because i'm supporting g we also had vancouver plus 190 dallas plus 425 and nycfc plus 175 so shaman nyc can't get it done against houston uh, Dallas, you know, I, Danny Bulanga flies halfway across the world to be there and put you guys away. And Dallas caught a red card in the first half. So tough, you know, um, tough, tough, tough. And Vancouver, obviously not getting it done. Although they did for them, got a good result at the end stoppage time goal to, to get a point there in Minnesota. Uh, so that'll be minus six units. We double, <laughs> Our total from from the I think we were down six point one two last week. Now down twelve point one two units. Mm. Mm. Let's fucking turn it around here this week. E, um, I'll start off. Let me. I'll, I've been picking on LAFC at home. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go with them here this week on the road. They're going to the elevation there in okay. Colorado, but plus one ten LAFC. I'm pretty damn confident in that LAFC at plus money. Let, let's lock that in to start. I like it. Um, we picked on them and probably shouldn't. Yeah, twice they're, now. They're fucking good. Um, <laughs> so after got? the break, you know, we mm-hmm. we saw Atlanta last week with a, a, a real eye popper result. Oh yeah. Um, you know, and without their without their best players, the if season ends right now, it's either Almada or Bulanga for MVP. Yeah. Um, so the boys are back there in Atlanta. Um, we're taking them plus 100 versus the Red Bulls. Tiago back. They got the boys back from the international break. They were probably, Yorgos. Maybe he gets Yor- a start this week. I am Yorgos. Um, <laughs> probably not. I don't think so. No start this week? No, I, I, I would say no. Are you saying okay. yes? I, I think Yorgos could start this week. Okay, add it to the bets. Add, add it to our side pool. Evers, <laughs> I wonder if we, we can get remember it. the last one we did because we did split on something. Uh, and I'm pretty sure we I, split I, San Jose, uh, St. Louis two weeks ago. That's where right. I took them yeah, straight yeah. to win, and you took them for the draw and and three nil loss. <laughs> they got us <laughs> since the magic in St. Louis continued for sure. Oh, um, my God. Yes. Okay. On to you, my friend. Okay, so Atlanta even odds. You said. Is what Plus we got one. right now on that? Okay, nice. Um, let me take the team that defeated Atlanta 6-1 to one last weekend. Uh, Columbus Crew at home again this week. RSL coming to town. Uh, Columbus minus 115. Um, I know, obviously, Cucho still out. But I think with each passing week, Wilfred Nance just kind of impressing more and more of his tactics, his philosophy onto this team. RSL out of the elevation, um, certainly struggling. I mean, they got walloped at home by St. Louis this past week. So I, I like I like the crew to kind of get it rolling here, minus 115 at home against RSL. Okay. I like that. Definitely hot, hot after that fucking 
whooping. Yeah. They put on Atlanta last week. Um, okay. I'm looking at – we're going back to them. They have let us down. Had a disappointing okay. week last week. Philly. Oh, Philly. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Um, sorry, I was I got distracted there by these uh, these standings I was looking at. Trying to find all the teams that are still without a win. And uh, Sporting KC, one of them. Yeah. So versus this Philly squad who we know is ultra talented, we will also mm-hmm. point out for a little – you know, we, we still want to keep – we're an Austin FC podcast. We want to show a little love to the squad whenever we can. We have more points in Philly right now. We do. So We do. We'll, we'll just leave that there. We don't have to, we don't have to go, go any farther with that. So, uh, <laughs> it's just a I'll fact. Take, I'll take Philly. Okay. Add on 1.5 goals for the over. We get them On the total or for – on the total, right, for the game? For the total, correct. Okay. We get them at minus 110 versus SKC. And I say lock that in. All right, let's lock it in. Um, let me get this one. If you've got anything else, definitely add it on. But this is one I wanted to get into. Keep riding. FC Cincinnati. Um, they've got Miami coming to town after. And I think when uh, their captain went down with that that six-month injury a few weeks back, I think I pronounced his name Gregor. It's actually Gregory, mm-hmm. uh, although it is spelled Gregor, uh, <laughs> at least in my uneducated eyes. Um <laughs> They have struggled to say the least since he went down. I believe three straight losses. I guess I could, I could, you know, got the power of the internet here right in the palm of my hands. Enter Miami uh, over the last three games. Yeah, three straight L's after that hot start. Um, so give me kind of similar to your Philly bet right there. Give me FC Cincinnati to win at home over one and a half on the total. Brandon Vasquez got on the score sheet last week. Uh, finally, so you know, took the lid off the goal for himself. Uh, him, Brenner, Lucho Acosta, um, our boy Matt Miazga, nine points this week in best ball. Um, awesome. since he went over one and a half, plus 105 hosting Miami. Uh, let's let's lock that in as well. Um, so we got five picks on the board. Anything else for you? No, sir. All right, so uh, LAFC plus 110 at Colorado. Atlanta even money against Red Bulls. Columbus minus 115 hosting RSL. Philly an over one and a half total minus 110 against SKC. And Cincy over one and a half total against Miami plus 105. Like it. All right. Well, uh, that'll do it here. Episode 42 of the North End Podcast. Really appreciate everybody being with us. Um, If you've got five seconds to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast, wherever you get your podcast, we would greatly appreciate it. If you're listening on the YouTube channel or watching, I guess I should say, on the YouTube channel, please subscribe to the channel. You can hit the notification bell to know when a live stream pops up or a new episode goes live. And for this episode, make sure hit that thumbs up, like the video, Help us battle the YouTube overlords. Atone for your sins. Wash yourselves clean in the waters of the North End. Uh, We will be back on Sunday after that Austin FC2 match. So even it doesn't have to be just me ranting to you about my experience. We can can share our insights about the match against SKC2. I'm looking forward to that. We will talk about any other Austin FC news that pops up between now and then. You know there will be some. Uh, Mm -hmm. and recap mls week six um i'm a little like i would rather us have a match but i'm kind of excited saturday night to be able to sit down and watch 360 and really take in a full match day um you know without that two hour break for our own team uh so it'll be a little bit of a different experience but i'm looking forward to watching some other teams i'm with you there i'm also looking forward to that obviously we'll miss our boys but um Yeah. yeah it'll be good to just catch up on the league and um Take, you know, take, take a little, take a little break from the hostility. Yeah. Regroup a little bit, you know, players, coaches, fans alike. Uh, So again, we'll be back on Sunday. Appreciate you being with us. This has been episode 42 of the North End podcast. He's E. I'm Zach. Vamos Austin FC, everybody. Goodbye.